are you? Okay. Hello. How have you been? Okay. Ah. Uh, where's your car? Uh, at home. This huh? is my baby. Ah. Wait. <laughs> this is not your Axia. Viva. Viva changed to this. Ah. Viva Viva. Oh, this one? Oh, oh, you bought this. Interesting. Guess how much? I don't want to guess. How much? Save about thousand plus. To work out cheaper than me. Three four thousand. Two one five. Even more. It's worth for two hundred plus. Four hundred bucks of savings. Okay, right off that, I'm gonna drive this home. Ta-da! And Brian is allowing me to drive to to drive his car. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh. Okay. Uh, so is that you Okay. Uh, Simon, you want to open the door or whatever? Go ahead, uh. Maybe, maybe uh? we can start the engine, lah. Uh, okay. To maybe... You want to guide Simon? Uh, she she assists Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now for a review of the Beza. Have I reviewed the Beza? I haven't reviewed the Beza before. Okay, let it be. So we got keyless. Mm. Keyless and pushed up. Yes. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, which, which of my car got keyless and pushed up? <laughs> only the Audi. Only the Audi has it. Got telescopic no. steering or not? No. Why, uh, Broda? Keyless, push start, and steering cannot telescope. How is it? It's not good. Maybe now the latest one. Got actually, it could be because actually, all these electronics, right? Mm. They are not expensive. From a manufacturer perspective, right? They are not expensive. It's just that they position it as a, as a luxury thing and try to justify charging more. So for my driving position, if I if I need to put my feet comfortably, my legs, my hands are all straight because the steering wheel is not telescopic, and uh, yeah, it's like an awkward position. Yeah, to me, it's more important to have uh, my feet and my legs properly placed than my hands properly placed. Even though they say, oh, your hands can do this, do this. How many people need to do this, do this on daily road, right? But if your legs are not placed properly, like your legs are like that, when you go into a crash, not very healthy. <laughs> but of course, the worst are those people who like put their seat really behind and then straighten their legs. Huh? Oh, those are worse. Actually, uh, as a car, how can you argue? I mean, it's just for yeah. daily use, just like that. You don't have to think about it much. Yes, yes. But then it's 50... 50 50k la. flat. Yes. Ouch. Ouch. Not cheap. Yes, yes. No. <laughs> but is it, does it come with a different engine from the entry level? Yes. One, well, this one is 1.3. Oh, the this one 1.3. The old my V engine. And then the entry is 1.0. Yes, 1.0. Uh, yeah. But this 1.3 not bad. Proven yeah. engine. So it's very, very fuel efficient. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I wonder how fuel efficient it is. You know my Fiat, my 127? Mm. I bought it uh, in 
December 2019. Then it was with Chris Wee for like one or two months. Then I pick it up around end of January. Oh, to, to year 2020, okay. end of January. And last night is officially my second time refueling. <laughs> okay, I thought that day. Yeah, that oh, was the so first. Wow! Wow, <laughs> <laughs> I refueled two times <laughs> in one year! <laughs> this one, supercar level! Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That was the first time. Oh, that's why you didn't know how to open the Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, oh yeah, for, for those of you, I think you guys have seen Brian on and off in our pictures and all that. Yeah, Brian will be uh, hopefully officially joining us next month. All right or not? Yes. yes, uh, yes. Fan, fan say okay, really? Eh? Haven't said <laughs> <yet>. uh, <laughs> Should I go? You got smart tech? Uh? No. No. Uh, touch and go. Touch and go lah. I go here faster or not? Can. Instead of going through the... Is it faster here? Shit. Did I just took a lot? But if we go down there... And then... No, I know the way, I know the way. Don't worry, don't worry. I know the way. Just whether faster and so... Oh, just want to find out faster or so. Uh, okay. Yeah, right off the Ferrari... Roma... Uh, which costs like 2 million 2 point something as a start and, uh, Actually, how do you define that? I mean, I don't know how to put it uh, Maybe for people who hasn't uh, owned these cars or exposed enough, right? You will see it like a ladder, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah But for us, we no longer see it like that We no longer see like... Okay Granted, Paganis and all that, I was still, you know? Yeah, yeah. But anything apart from those untouchables, uh, like Rolls Royce, uh, Bentley, uh, Aston, uh, Ferrari, what is that? To me, it's just like, yeah, they occupy a different place. Uh, they are food that costs different prices, uh, that's it. Uh. Sorry, I need to use your dashing code. No worries. I used to have one in my wallet. Drive Grab use customers. <laughs> Thank you. Spacious. But I remember sitting at the back. Not comfortable. It's horrible. I mean, okay, it's a comfortable space, right? I mean, it's more it's more comfortable than the Roma's back seat, <laughs> right? That's the thing. It's just that, comparatively speaking, I will I will see a Beza as comparable to, you know, Vior City Saga and all that. Uh. This one, the, the back seat is not that comfortable. And again, yeah, see, see that's the argument, that's the funny thing. It's both expensive and the cheapest. Because, in to our eyes, a Beza and a Vios, there's not much of a difference. It's the same thing, it's basic, family, uh, four-door, five-seater motoring and the Honda City as well, Honda Almera as well. So, rather than spending 90, 80, uh, 50 does the job. But Saga is cheaper, right? Yeah, Saga is cheaper. Saga is much nicer to drive. Much nicer to drive. Saga's handling, right? Yes, yeah, it's a, it's a lot better. It's not bad. It's not like those days where you do a, you do a turn and then the whole car just go. It's not. It's no longer like that. It's no longer like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can see why it's it's so sellable. Is that the same spec as yours? Oh, that one is entry entry level. Entry. Yeah. yeah. Got chrome strip at the back. Oh, I yeah. thought it's high end already. How do you tell it's entry? The X. Oh, yours is what? Uh, advanced. Oh, there's an advanced batch at the back? Yes. Oh.
that time when we test drive the Insight Hybrid mm. back in year 2009 I think or 2010 uh, you know that time I had my Subaru Legacy yeah. 265 horsepower but it's Japan import so 180 kmh limit so my staff driving the Honda Insight on the highway heading to Putrajaya, right? I'm already 180 max out. This car can go like 181 or 82. So he's overtaking me like that. <laughs> and then my, my, my team is like... <laughs> yeah, so if you really, 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 really wanted a new car, Beza or Saga of course, but Beza larger right? Yes. Larger than Saga yeah, right? Slightly larger. Is it? I, thought, I think the boot is a lot larger. Yeah. Right? Okay. yeah it's a much bigger car than the, than the Saga. The Beza looks more like the smaller brother of the Persona than the Saga. Oh, yeah. The Persona also like a like oh, an inflated please. balloon like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Or if you don't mind, Used cars, your budget you can get a, a used, I don't know, Corolla or Accord and, and, uh, or Camry and things like that. Yeah. Because think of it this way, the reason you buy these cars that you will take a 7 year loan or 9 year loan is because you you sort of at the back of your head, you think that, hmm, because they're reliable, right? So, since these cars are reliable, uh, that also makes cars like the Corolla, the Camry, those are reliable as well, right? In fact, maybe more reliable because they were made with uh, much better quality materials and things like that, right? So, that also means if they're more reliable, that also means that your budget could have been spent on one of them. A used one? Mm. Right. The time... Never mind, you haven't known Bobby yet. Yes, the time I haven't known Bobby Young yet. <laughs> now, now, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah, it's a small car. See the reason why a lot of cars in this segment they don't give you the glove box and the center armrest, of course to save cost, but also makes you makes it feel bigger. Makes the interior feel bigger as well. You know, they omit a lot of things. And, uh, this thing is is pretty pretty clever and also pretty sad at the same time uh, that we need a handbag protector, you know. And this thing is only for handbag, right? Yeah, it's like three kgs. Yeah, 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 you can hang very heavy stuff. And you pull the thing down or what? How do you operate it? Press that one. Uh. Yeah, press it. Oh, press it and pull it. I see, I see. Oh, the thing goes up. Yeah, the thing goes up, then you lock it. Yeah. Where's the data rate hook of this car? Uh, In the back seat, right? Yes. Yeah. The data rate hook was actually an idea from Uncle Chips Young. During a press con, he suggested to, I forgot, was it Proton or Baroda? He said, why don't they include a hook? Because Malaysians like to tap out food and drinks and all that. And they really listened and they introduced this in a car. And credit to Uncle Chips, it was Chips Young who suggested that. You know, back in those days, right, where I mean, real motoring journalists. Lah. Car makers really invite them. These are more car experts, right? Car makers really invite them to to give their two cents, to give their opinion and two cents, and then they take note of it, and then they go back and study for the feedback before they launch the car. That was back then. But in the internet era, when everybody is a motoring expert, you know, by reading, by rehashing press release and all that, right? Car makers no longer do that. Yeah, I remember I was I was I was driving the pre-production S90 V90, and then uh, I pointed out to the engineers the rear tail light assembly. You know the edge of it is too sharp. The way they assemble is the, a sharp edge, and then with a black plastic at the back. So I told them this kind of assembly, the meeting point is here, man. This type of assembly, right, would leave a gap in the opening, and because it's at the tailgate of the V90, a lady with a you know those sweater oh, that is woven we'll one? We'll you get yes, you get you hook on to that. And it will be very pretty often because of the way the tail leg assembly was made. And the engineers took note of it and in the production they changed it. 
they change it to a uh, wrap around. So the even though the design is sharp, but the red doesn't end here with the black plastic at the back. The red wraps around so that there's no opening edge to yes, hook yes. on to anything. So yeah, these are the things that, that but I don't I don't I don't think car makers still do it now, especially in Malaysia. Yeah, but they used to used to do it. Yeah, yeah. They will send the more senior ones to, to these type of drives. Like that now. And then the Porsche one, I went to the Cayenne one. I, I said, hey, you guys have the, the, the screen that controls the aircon vents in the Panamera. Why you don't have it in the Cayenne? They're like, because of too many complaints, right? They're like, yeah, they're like, too many complaints. But I said, you already designed the actuators, you know, for the aircons to, to, to interact with the screen, right? And then the, the, the aircons will move. And then you give it up in the Cayenne, then you don't get to enjoy the, the econ economies of scale by by using that component in more cars. As Henry was like, no choice, too many complaints from customers. Yeah. Then I was like, do you know that actually you add one more line of code, coding, you'll be able to legitimize why you designed the actuator for the air vents. Then he was like, what? Auto oscillate. Oh. <laughs> I said, if the screen, if the screen has a button, that says auto oscillate and when I press that, your actuators at the back move the aircon vents like that, then it makes sense yeah. why you use an actuator, uh, 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 a powered aircon vent, you know? And, 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 the, and the guy looked at me with his eyes open, right? He was like, we never thought of that. <laughs> that was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, those were the days. Now, now, now I don't know. Look forward lah. Yeah. But now I do fly also. I send corn and all that. Hopefully next time if you guys are up to it, right? If you guys can improve on your writing, your presenting and all that, then, then I can send you all. Yeah. Anyway, that's the bezar. Belongs to Brian. And uh, Technically, he hasn't graduated yet, right? Almost. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright guys, um, that's my assignment for the day. Driving Brian's car back to NASA to pick up my car. Yeah. Cheers! Bye-bye! Thank you! <laughs> back to my car. And uh, Bing is heading over to meet the team. So. Uh, Maybe I'll drop by and see everyone there before I head off. Since everybody is there. And I haven't seen Bing for some time. So happy she's doing her own thing. She's busy with her own stuff. Not easy. Because I've been through that. Yeah. But I'm sure with the support from the team of Horizon, Anything is possible. Huh? Oh. Yes. Alright, let's go. Oh. It's always easier to drive your own car. Oh. <sighs> Sayang my car under the sun for so long. For so long. <laughs> Okay. Don't need music. Ah, oh, the sound. The sound. Okay, this this proper analog feel. Proper proper analog sound, right? Whereas Ferraris has now got a turbocharged and all that. Yeah, now I'm gonna head over to meet the the team. 
Say hi before I go by. So the the Roma actually is I don't know what, how to put it. There's no rush. They don't need to rush it out, right? They could have spent a little bit more time. But then you have the SF90 with the new interior as well. So most of the hesitations or or rejections from customers that I'm seeing will be the entire set of, you know, the complete ditching of the analog dials, the uh, touch sensitive everything interior, because from the way I see it, uh, it's currently too big of a departure, right? And, um, and then you think about whether, is it necessary, was it necessary to embark on such a big departure from what they used to do that's a that's a question that that Ferrari should seek to answer because that's a very big risk because the emotional aspects of buying a Ferrari you know the the ref counters that goes up the the yellow ref counter you know, those are all part of it, and to completely ditch it in in pursuit of what customers may ask, right? In pursuit of what? What was the end goal? Why? I think that part of the reasoning should be made by Ferrari because they are they are one of the best in emotional storytelling because Porsche is the best huh? but Ferrari is really good at it too so yeah you need to connect your consumers on this thing so that it makes sense to them just like Lexus you know when they created the LFA they said that we have to use uh, a digital speedometer because the analog one doesn't swivel as fast as the engine. You see where I'm going? That may be true, half true, I'm not sure, but it sounds sure cool as hell. It sure sounds cool as hell, you know, by, by just by mentioning that in that manner, it's just, whoa, right? So. Ferrari, Roma, interesting, but in terms of the bodywork, the style, the way it drives, uh, the way the transmission reacts, the power of the engine, uh, I have no complaints about that, I have no complaints at all, right? that engine is just crazy powerful, extremely powerful, and it's good that in low ref range they're able to make it like it feels already boosted you know it's, it's like the power is always there so that's a nice thing that's a nice thing in terms of finishing i don't expect ferrari to suddenly be as good in its interior execution as audi's or aston martin's or porsche's porsche has a bit of a cut spec recently but i mean this 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 aston martin this generation aston martin is just crazy the fit and finish the the finishing of the car is just superb and uh, i don't expect ferrari to immediately reach this level they've never been known to make the best interiors uh, but it's a good start you know all the soft touch leather parts and uh yeah the roma i don't know i'm conflicted because the exterior is is a hug back to traditional uh, thoroughbred coach building kind of bodywork design, but the interior is uh, is all out high tech, you know. 
So that's the part where I'm a bit conflicted. Mm. Alright. Should have gone there. It's a jam as well. <sighs> Let's go to Alia again and meet Thomas, Bing, Simon, HP, Brian, Chiang. I don't know whether Tana is here or not. Con won't be here today because Con is extremely caught up with uh, his side of the thing. And um, Rachel is coming also later. Interesting day with the Ferrari. Should I repaint my Aston because I'm currently in the midst of pondering about repainting my my BMW 6 Series and I'm, I do not know which direction to go for. Do I go for super loud? You know, like uh, Chu Yang's M3 color or Red, I already have a red car, I'm not gonna... You know, the, the 6 Series has a beautiful tail light. A very uniquely designed tail light. And I will not paint the car red to hide away that. Right, it needs to show that. It needs to show that, that tail lamp. And um, I won't go white, because I already have a white car. I will try and get some other color, you know. And I'm still thinking and considering and pondering yeah. yeah I of course do have the notion of how huh, how about a very deep luscious dark green with uh, metallic flakes that simmers through when the sunlight is on the car but somehow suddenly I just felt it hey, this, this scheme looks overdone recently. Like almost every car maker would launch a car in this color scheme. So, again, I'm not sure. What are your thoughts? Oh, that Ferrari can only wish it sounds like this. Uh, I'll gladly give up 100 horsepower. Yeah, the Roma has 620. My own my car only, only has 560, but uh, uh, the sound, the sound. What a beautiful note. Downshift sounds just as good as the upshifts. sounds that correlates with your feet the angle of your feet is your foot or feet whatever lovely Lucky I have this. 
you drive a relatively low car, actually you drive any car you should need this because it's just so convenient. Sorry for that. Yes, I am enjoying myself. when I drive the Roma right I don't need to drive it this way to enjoy the car because that car even in its sports mode it it doesn't suggest me that it wants it wants that kind of you know even though it could because its character is predominantly smooth comfortable and even though it's very powerful, it chooses to hide it. Yeah, that's the kind of car it is. So, interesting. Are you? Okay. <laughs> How have you been? Okay. Uh, uh, where's your car? Uh, at home. This huh? is my baby. Ah. Wait. <laughs> this is not your Axia. <laughs> Viva. Viva changed to this. Uh. Viva Viva. Oh, this one? New, uh, new to our... Oh, oh, you bought this. Interesting. I don't want to guess. How much? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I thought my Fiat was cheap. Oh, this one bargain way. Yeah. I love driving this car. La. Anyway, yeah, that's Bing. And uh, it's not your turn yet, right? No, not yet. Okay, la. enjoy the car later. Well, it's a Ferrari that behaves like an Aston. Yeah, a gentleman's sports car. Yeah, without the, without this. <laughs> right guys, uh, watch Bing's review later on, on the, on the Ferrari. So now, 
uh, my way of doing all this is now that everyone will shoot the car, I will be the latest to upload. So if you guys want to watch, you all watch the ass first. Alright, cheers. That the brothers on the rise now. Woo! Endless celebrations all in my house. Yeah. Levitating now, I'm super duper fly now. Yeah. Love them boy, but they see where I reside now. Put the time in while you always yelling.